It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. If you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. We answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, to help us with questions today. We got some great questions today on the mailbag. Uh, The first question is from Grace in Edison, New Jersey. Grace says, Bob, I'd like to start putting money into a college fund for my grandkids. Should I set up a 529 plan for them or just invest on my own and give them the money when they go to school? Hey, Grace, that's a great question. And and boy, I'll tell you, I wish 529 plans were around when my son and partner, Ryan, was uh, growing up because they are the greatest deal for anyone who's saving for education. You know, first of all, Ry, you know, we, we put money away for you and I had to pay tax on it because we didn't have a 529 plan. And, you know, every dime in a 529 grows tax-free. That is the greatest thing I've ever seen, uh, maybe since sliced bread. How's that? Oh, wow. Bob, I mean, the greatest thing since sliced bread, that's a pretty uh, pretty bold statement. But no, I agree with you. You know, it works on, on a lot of fronts, right? I mean, if you want to educate for your kids or your grandkids, it grows tax-free, you take it out tax-free. Also, it's a great estate planning tool if you're trying to get money out of your estate you can gift five years up front. So if it's $15,000 you can gift per person and you're a couple, that's 30,000. Times that by five, Bob, you can get that out of your estate in one shot with no gift tax. And that's a lot of funding that you can have for the astronomical cost of college right now for for your loved ones. It's a great deal. You know, Ryan, uh, since I started this industry 45 years ago, I've been looking at the cost of education been running, you know, college projections for every client I've ever worked with. You know, everybody wants their child to go to college or grandchild to go to college. And, you know, the college tuition has grown at twice uh, inflation, you know, over that 45 year period. And I've always said, oh, I can't keep going that way. And you know what? I was dead wrong. So, you know, it's not going to get cheaper. It's not an, an, you know, it's not an expense you can ignore. And the 529 plan is the best thing to force you to save and to give you the best chance you have of covering these ridiculously high tuitions. Hope that helps, Grace. Our next question is from Rose Marie in Stamford, Connecticut. She says, Ryan, how much is too much to spend on our forever home? We're going to move in a couple of years when we retire, and my husband wants to buy a house that's cheaper than our current home so that we can avoid having a mortgage in retirement. But this is going to be the place that we live for the rest of our lives, so I want it to be perfect. Who's right? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer in start aspirationally when it comes to your goals. Because if you save the money, and again, this is why goals are so important and you can project this stuff out. Having financial projections is key. Write that down. Um, You can decide. You can figure out, let's just say hypothetically, and I don't know your specific situation, Rosemary, but it's the difference between getting a $500,000 house and an $800,000 house. And we run the numbers for you. And we say, look, you go with the bigger house and your money doesn't run out, then why wouldn't you go for the bigger house? You've been working so hard your whole life so you can really enjoy the money that you saved. In my mind, run the numbers, but if it works for you, I don't know about you, Bob, but I'd go for the house that I want to live in. You only live once. You know what? I just met with a really good client this week, and and we found out that he's he's spending 75% of his after-tax income on maintaining his homes. So I convinced them to finally sell the most expensive home and he turns around and tells me he's buying an even more expensive home in Florida. And I said, what are you, crazy? What are you gonna, why are you doing that? He says, well, my wife wants to store all of her antiques. And I said, well, I got an idea for you. Why don't you go get some estimates of what those antiques are worth? And guess what they found out, buddy? Nothing. Yeah, about 10 times less than they thought. So now <laughs> they're going to be smarter. They're going to do exactly what this woman's husband wants to do. And they're going to buy a smaller house if they get their big house sold. And they're going to try and give away the antiques. Nobody wants them anymore. Yeah, Bob. I mean, that's just the that's just the point of planning, right? You've got to figure out what's that mix of tangible and intangible assets and what can I afford and not afford. 
And doing the plan is always going to lead you to the right answer. So that's why you have to do the planning first. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888 or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. It's time for financial propaganda of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance. And we find the good advice out there as well to help you make the best decisions when it comes to your planning and investing. So Bob, you, I mean, you and I had lots of articles going back and forth this week. What were some of the ones that really struck your fancy that we need to talk about today on financial propaganda? So I picked up an article talking about someone who's very nervous, doesn't want to invest in the stock market, and was wondering, would an indexed annuity be a good substitute? Well, we know indexed annuities are sold, Bob. They're not bought. (laughs) And they are very complicated when they're explained. But the gist of it is you don't lose anything when the market goes down. You get the market upside. It's like a no-brainer from the way it's pitched. But from all the analysis that you and I have done, an indexed annuity is not always the best decision. Well, I can guarantee you that's not how the insurance agent pitches it, right? Because basically when you have an indexed annuity, it's a fixed insurance product. Now, you know, there are regulations in the insurance industry and by law, they have to be conservative with your money. So really, since it's a fixed annuity, in essence, they have to buy bonds, you know, to cover the guarantees in a contract and they take a very, very small bit of your money and they buy derivatives. Now, you know, I talk about Warren Buffett all the time. You know what he calls derivatives, right? I'm going to say it's not a nice term because derivatives by nature, are very exotic and complicated investment products. Right. He calls them weapons of mass financial destruction. So it's, you know, (laughs) they're very risky. And so the the fact of the matter is when you buy a fixed indexed annuity, what you're really doing is you're getting a very small portion of money that has anything to do with stocks. And therefore, it's a very poor substitute for a well-thought-out, well-balanced portfolio. Yeah, the long story short there too, as it says, you know, you get the upside of the market. Well, they cap it and make sure that you only get such a little part of that upside that you are probably better off getting a CD at like 2% return over time. So it's a very tricky product. Buyer beware. Be careful. You always point out to me when anybody brings up an indexed annuity is that half the return in the stock market over our lifetime came from dividends. Guess who gets the dividends in your annuity? You or the insurance company? The insurance company. Bingo. That's a problem. Enough said. <laughs> so, Enough not said. a good deal for you. Enough said. One of the articles that you actually sent over to me this week, Bob, I thought was great, and it also plays into a lot of things we talk about on the show, is this article on should you dump your mutual funds for ETFs or exchange-traded funds? And some of the reasons why it suggests that you might want to do that is ETFs cost a lot less than owning a mutual fund. And as we've said for a long time, Mutual funds are old school. Don't own them in your portfolio anymore. You know, Rod, the average mutual fund charges over 1%. Now, this is not in addition to what your financial advisor is charging for advice. This is just the mutual fund where the average ETF is only charging four tenths of 1%. So the fee is like 75% less. And based on our analysis and every study that's out there, is ETFs over time, the returns based on their respective or pitted against those mutual funds have done a lot better. So it's cost less and the performance has been better over time. What am I missing here? 
Well, you're missing that uh, you might have a brother-in-law that runs a mutual fund that you want to keep in business. But other than that, you really want to go with a low-cost provider. You know, mutual funds have been around a lot longer than ETS. But, you know, last I checked, Bri, the uh, index funds, the passive investments that sometimes are wrapped in an ETF are now there's more money there than there are mutual funds, just barely. But, you know, I think it's going to all move that way eventually. Yeah, that's where the sea change is going. And now it's going to be worse here at the end of the year because if you own mutual funds and any of your taxable accounts, like a brokerage account, they have to pay their taxes out regardless. So you might see some unnecessary taxes this year just because in that mutual fund structure, they have to pay those gains to you. And who wants to pay unnecessary taxes, Bob? I sure don't. Okay. That sounds like three strikes so far, right? Number one, it costs more. Number two, it's going to cause you to pay taxes even though you haven't done anything. Number three, they typically underperform the index net of their fees. So there's three strikes against it. Was there anything else? (laughs) I think that's enough for me. But I think one thing you can do here proactively in the year is go through your portfolios, look and see if you still have mutual funds. If you do and you have an advisor, say, hey, let's make the change here. Let's get with the times. Let's lower my costs. Let's make my portfolio more tax efficient and better performing over time. You know, Ryan, this all ties back into having a fiduciary versus a financial advisor or stockbroker, right? As fiduciaries, we moved a long time ago to low-cost index funds, and those costs have actually dropped every single year in the last 10 years. And now we have a platform where you don't even have to pay commissions. We have a platform where the commissions have been eliminated. You know, because as a fiduciary, our job is to seek out the best deal for you, the investor. So again, it just reinforces why you want to be certain that the number one thing you do is make sure that your advisor is a fiduciary. Another interesting article, Bob, that you sent me this week was, Social Security Administration actually unveiled the cost of living adjustments for 2020. They're actually going to bump up your benefit by 1.6% next year, which, you know, where I come from, that's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Well, Rye, if you're one of the 63 million Social Security beneficiaries, that's great news, but you're not going to be able to live on that Social Security should not be the only part of your financial plan. You want to make sure that you have an income-generating portfolio to supplement that. Yes. And that's another thing to think about, too, is when we talk about annuities earlier in the show, we talk about annuities a lot, is a lot of those annuities where you get that fixed income stream, they don't account for inflation because your cost of living is going to go up over time. But if you're getting a fixed payment month after month, well, that's not going to keep up with inflation So it's so important when you're building your portfolio, you're factoring in that you need investments in your portfolio where the income is actually increasing over time because your needs are going to increase over time. And that's the beauty of our wealth projection because, you know, one of the things that you don't take into account when you're thinking about retirement, thinking about your investments, thinking about your financial plan is you forget about inflation and inflation is insidious. It's hidden. It compounds. And when you make your wealth projections, you have to account for that. It's going to cost you twice as much to live 25 years from now from what you're living on right now, even if you don't change your lifestyle. So you want to be certain that you have inflation-adjusted strategies that will you know, hedge against inflation, beat inflation, so that you can retire comfortably. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks you have in your portfolio you don't know about We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844-752-6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Hey, thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on the show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com 
For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.